And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the 200th <laughs> episode of the Camera Mully Show. Holy shit. With me is Ming Chen. What's up, everybody? And I am Camera Mully. Uh, 200. Dear God, we've been doing this for this long. <laughs> Who knew? Who knew? Uh, my team still have yet to get their act together. Well, that's awesome. Right, but well, like, that, that's the fun of the show. Anyways, we got a complete package for you. <laughs> We're going to talk about the first couple episodes of Hard Knocks. The Devils have had their entire offseason. The Yankees season has just completely fallen apart. We got. Yeah. We're going to have a. It's fitting. There's going to be it a is. bit of everything. It is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> in this in this episode, unfortunately, I did not watch the third episode of Hard Knocks, which. Apparently has all the Saquon Barkley drama, drama, drama. the wow. goodness that us high school girl sports fans <laughs> that's, die to see. That's, that's what it boils down to. But first and foremost, congratulations, two hundred episodes. Um, I think you're the first one to reach it. I don't. I don't think. Wasn't that also is. the first one to reach one hundred? You were. Yeah, you were. So the most consistent. You're. You know what? Cal Ripken used to be my hero. Not anymore. It's Cameron Woolley as uh, the Iron Man. I was like, I come in and I <laughs> sit down on my ass and talk about sports. Yeah, for, I, I mean, you're a long no, way from no. 2632, but you know, in podcast years, 200 might as well be I mean, the it, Iron it, Man it's record. A, it's, a, it's Iron Man record here. Hey, so, yeah. yeah. So I, I wanted to get the banners like yeah. unfurled. You could take it a lap around the studio, <laughs> like a high five, like the, some of the, the other people around here. this like 15 <laughs> square foot. Yeah, space Studio. that I have left here. Yeah, but you know, milestone. My, it's all oh, about milestones. Big We're time. sports fans. It's all about numbers. It's about longevity. It's all about heart. He's it's all compiler. about grit. I'm a compiler. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, um, mm. you know, as you see, I went all out with the. Uh, the we had the, the 100 balloons. balloons. Now we got the 200. Mm. Don't have as much of a spread as last time, but I'm fine with that. I'm uh, I, yeah. Like, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm trying to cut back. On the on the, the pizza. And well, it was easier <laughs> last time. The pizza place was literally downstairs, so that was yeah. that was a little yeah. The easier. pizza place. Uh, it's a shame that that place closed. Oh, is it gone? Like gone, gone? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Well, I know. But it's well, it's a different. Yeah, they place. changed ownership. It wasn't it wasn't the same because the other place looked like they hadn't cleaned in like fifty five. Yeah, that's years. why it was so that good because so you had because you had the fifty years worth of like grease of grease build up. Yeah, like Guido Just everywhere, like everything, man. And um, yeah, then they went and cleaned it up. It was it was never the same. But although we do have um, <laughs> Italian stuff here from we do. Uncle Giuseppe's. Your unofficial sponsor, uh, Uncle Giuseppe's Marketplace. Uh, the no, place. no I've, uh, my mom's gotten some stuff from oh, there. I've so gotten, good. Like, I've gotten like their chicken parm, their good. their bread. Yeah, they have pizza. They have everything. Everything you yeah, like. They, everything it, good in life. Like it's a nice little indie Italian grocery store. It's a all right. All right. Well, it's let, pretty massive. Don't uh, don't don't. It's uh, it's right. no mom and pop joint, but. All right, open I'll, late. I'll, I'll see what we got in here. All right. uh, and uh, uh, the 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 donuts. <laughs> uh, they're, they're supposed I, to be cakes. They're, they're, they're built as mini birthday cakes. cakes. They, happy birthday! I mean, listen. Uh, we, we got, we, uh, we got anniversary. Happy, no, no, it, it's basically a birthday. And uh, yeah, there you go. All right, so there we go. dig in, Cameron. Right, we're, you've, we're uh, be, we're gonna be. You've earned it. All right, I have uh, some of these. Yeah, here, here's a spoon. Spoons. Here's uh, we got two of these. These are Oreos. They're like the, the, here. These are basically cake Oreos. What, what we're looking at here. Oh, they're. Ha- the, oh, the, I will. The, I we have. Dump, a, we I have. Dumped a, it. I don't think we've done a live eating crap on the show well, since we, episode one hundred. Right. Well, we, we, remember the, that, that time we that, got the tacos because um. Yeah, that, that was it? before one hundred because Mookie Betts stole a base right. in the the Mickey Mouse series. Yes. The uh, <laughs> get All a right. couple photos here mm-hmm. and uh, yes, happy birthday, happy anniversary. Uh, here we go, and uh, I, yeah, I know you've been cutting back, but listen, this is a big day, so uh, we <laughs> oh yeah, mm. oh yeah, that put just some good. fresh cream on there. Mm. I'll, I'll save the box; you don't have to eat the whole thing here. <laughs> mm. Mm. But, I can uh, I can kill this in in an hour and a like half three or, bites or like. however. <laughs> They're like, actually, the only trouble I have with cakes is. 
of all the frosting. It's like this. <laughs> if well, this didn't have a bunch of frosting on the top, I would have just eaten it like an Oreo. It's, it's pure sugar. It's pure sugar. I, I don't know what these Dude, are made I of, but them. they're absolutely amazing. It's um, Italian. I don't know. They, I don't know. We know how to cook. The, yeah, you guys know. You guys know how it's done for sure. Um, so uh, I had to take a bit of a break. Uh, I end up going to Colombia for a oh, wedding, yeah. <laughs> like the country of Colombia. Uh, then I had to go to Canada last week. And unfortunately, like the day I I leave, all this stuff happens uh, with the devils. So you're on a plane, and you can't catch any of it. I I I don't even know who to talk to. But um, got some new guys, uh, got some old guys co- that came back, which is uh, and I mean, you're dumb. I mean, we gotta cover the the Cotter, the Holtz swap, the. I mean, Pesci. Where do you want to start? Since. Where do you want to start? I guess I want to start at the top with the most significant pieces. Okay. Uh, I love that they that they signed Brett Pesci. Yeah. It's I, like, do I love the term? No. But only five and a half million a year for a defensive defenseman, which we need. From what I heard from <laughs> my buddies who are in Kane's land, they're pissed. They should be. Like, they're pissed that he's gone. I mean, Pesci, I mean, that Carolina team has had our number. Ever, I mean, in the playoffs, forever, they... Forever, it seems like, yeah. I mean, this is like going past the Eric Stahl, UC Jokinen, Shock at the Rock days. I, <laughs> yeah, I was I was there, yeah. Oh, that's right. You were I was at there. Shock at the Rock. Dude. I was that's there. That's like... That's your, like, that's, ultimate... That's like rock bottom right there. That was my rock bottom. And there's been a lot of rock bottoms sure. with with the Devils sure. and the um, Orioles I mean, before last year. Yes, a lot of rock bottoms, but that was probably the, the most. I wanted to throw up. Like <laughs> the closest I came to throwing up at a sporting event. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's like the the closest I came to like the most embarrassed I ever got at a sporting event was at like Atlantic City when when Iona when the Iona Overwatch team got knocked out oh. in the first round by a team they were like super duper favored to be at least, yeah. like whatever odds makers that there were there weren't there weren't any but right. <laughs> but still I was in the stands watching that you could have made a meme out of the way I looked <laughs> like I did the disappoint I was like oh my god. Like, yeah, but Brett Pesci coming here, I think he's going to stabilize that second pair. I think him with Luke Hughes. That's oh, man, that's what I, th- I didn't like, think about that. wonders on him because Luke Hughes last year, he kind of, he was kind of up and down. He showed a lot. Like, he was Calder finalist. Yeah. Like, Luke yeah. Hughes is not a schmuck. And he's statistically one of the better power play quarterbacks. No, one of the best power play quarterbacks in the NHL by those advanced metrics. And then you you had to throw him on the top pairing. You had to play him twenty minutes a night. You yeah. had to give him a lot of defensive responsibility. Yeah, and a, let us not forget his it's his first year too. So. Yeah, as a twenty year old. Yeah, yeah. Straight out of Michigan. Sure, the NCAA guys are a bit more professionally prepared than say a guy coming over from the juniors or from the AHL even. Sure. But but hey, let's let's bring back your first year podcasting was pretty great. But you know, look at you now. <laughs> Look at you now. You're, you know, it, your first year doing anything is it's a whole learning, it's yeah. a big learning experience, especially yeah, a big in a professional sports in league. the NHL. Yeah, when you're on skates and Luke Hughes, I think he's going to be able to more embrace his role as the offensive defenseman yeah. who can drive plays on his own. Do you look at the way he skates? You look at the way he handles the puck. Yeah. Look at the way he shoots, passes. He's a naturally like both of his brothers a naturally gifted play driver yeah i don't know what they have in the water over at the hughes household but whatever it is uh i the, the, they should bottle it the, the, they're it. fed good <laughs> yeah whatever they're it fed is good. they got they got a jewish mom you think Damn, she, okay you think she wasn't Feeding them, feeding them good all okay, the time. Okay, good. Uh, what gefilte fish and uh, I, uh, matzah? Oh, it must be the matzah, dude, the, every, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Did she made the sure matzo. she made sure Love that those boys were taken care of? Yes. And they were growing up. Made sure that they grew up strong. Made sure that they ate. Yeah. 
and you and like with Pesci, he can embrace that defensive role, and then that leaves Luke to just with complete liberty to do his thing the way he wants to do it without needing to take on any unnecessary responsibility yeah. that he feels he doesn't need to take on. Right. And I think you're going to see, although granted, Hughes and Pesci might not be the pairing because, you know, like all these off-season projected lines, you know, those those rarely pan out. <laughs> they look good on paper and then you get Like we the start ice. nicknaming lines in the preseason. Right. If you remember, oh, right. the, if you remember the H2O line. Yeah, the H2O with, line was with good. With Palat. Hughes and Halt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> One of those guys isn't even on the team anymore. Yep. And another is a cap liability. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but to get Dougie back, defense looks way better. <laughs> yeah. Not <laughs> to mention better. Brendan Dillon. Yeah. They bring him in. I know uh, I'm personally not the biggest fan of adding size and muscle for size and muscle's sake, but Brendan Dillon adds that on top of being defensively responsible being on the bottom pair you talk about pairing another defensively sound veteran with another young kid brendan dillon simone nemitz yeah now that yeah, that's that's another pairing that i could see working that's bottom pairing although you don't know how these guys are going to be utilized that might just be the shutdown pair because yeah. nemitz is more better built for defense and two-way game so I guess that's the shutdown pairing, but Brendan Dillon, thumbs up. I don't hate his contract. It's like, that's, that's my thing with NHL free agency. Over $1.2 billion was spent. The league is going to try moving $900 million of that within a couple of years. Yeah. Like, you see what, what the Rangers tried doing with Jacob Druba? <laughs> Did he, they knew that he was, like, before he submitted his no-trade list, that rumor slipped out that he was going to be moved to Detroit. They had the trade in place, and then he's like, nope, Detroit's on my no-trade list. Yeah. Then they're like, God damn it. Dang it. it. Who, who, the, who talked? Who talked? <laughs> I think the— They almost got rid of him. I think the journalist's name was Larry Brooks <laughs> on Twitter. So, thank you. Yeah. I I guess we thank him. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. thanks Larry. For keeping Jacob Truba yeah, he, on the Rangers. D- Jacob Truba and his elbow— is bad. Oh, hope you remain with the Rangers. <laughs> and and is uh yeah <laughs> defensive liability. Yes, defensive liability. Jacob Trubo will we'll, uh will be on the list. Uh, welcome back, Thomas Tatar. <laughs> Ooh. I, I mean, I sort of got the vibe last off season, or not the vibe. I think it was just kind of a fact. Oh, they'd be back. That he wanted to stay here. Yeah. Oh, sure. Like he was trying to make it work here. Then he signed with. I think he signed with Colorado first, and he went to Seattle, and it didn't really work there, or vice versa. I know those were the two teams that he was with, but he spent the year with them. Not really much of a fit. He comes back here where he was a pretty good fit. Yep. Maybe they try rekindling that line with him, Nico Heischer, and Dawson Mercer. Yep, I don't really know, although Timo Meyer on the top right wing with he sure seemed to work where he well. should be <laughs> where his stats just exploded after he went back so. well lindy ruff also got fired he did yeah i <laughs> the hockey hockey players are weird creatures athletes in general are weird creatures oh but, sure but hockey players especially are strange they're not baseball players okay that's strange yes they get some like, weird baseball players have the most insane voodoo superstitions, in some cases, I, literally. I, I mean, I still have my golden thong for when I want to do really well. So, like. yeah, 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 Jason Giambi wearing a golden <laughs> hey, thong. Hey, it worked. Yeah, it, it did. It worked. Like, I killed the Orioles left and right and every other team. It worked. <laughs> Didn't win a World Series with us. Well, but. okay. I mean, maybe he had, maybe it was laundry day. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, very weird superstitions, but hey, you know, when when uh, with the percentages and with, with the inches, it's a game of inches, percentages, a lot of luck, whatever works for you. Yeah, like hockey players, you know, they respond while the coaches. Sometimes they don't respond right. well, but like, I mean, I like Tatar coming back. Yep. He's gonna, he was a good fit on this team before, 
he plays at a bit more of the pace that they want as opposed to Alex Holtz. Yeah, well, yeah. Which... I mean, and Holtz was traded to Vegas, and this was a controversial move. I'm yeah, still Holtz not. Speed. I'm still not. I mean, like Akira Schmidt, he wasn't really going to be a piece on this team. Yeah, we had Jacob Markstrom, Jake Allen. The that those are the goalies. Yep. That's that's your battery. Yeah, I, and then we, Holtz, we, Holtz, they didn't give him a fair shot. Again, there was, I'm not 100% like, what the hell, why'd you trade him? It was the worst move ever. Sure, but you could have given him a little, a, a, like a, a little, few more they, reps they in did, there. They didn't give him I agree. the opportunity that he needed to succeed. I agree. Watch, now level. he's going to come back and kill us. Oh happens, yeah, happens every time. Oh, uh, dude! Like <laughs> once I, once I turn twenty one. Yeah. Whenever the Devils play Vegas, if the I just hold up. Look at the schedule. Look at the, look okay. at the Devils like which, calendar schedule. Which is coming if they up. play the Vegas Golden Knights after March fifth, my twenty first birthday, I'll put, I'll put a bit on Alexander Holtz anytime goal scorer. Okay. Twenty twenty four. Okay, I'm um, go to. Oh, Go to two. March 2025. Okay. Oh, okay. Is that the, the magic day? Uh, Mar- yeah, that's my my 21st when I can legally gamble. March 2025. Three days before my birthday. Wow. Are you kidding me? March 2nd. There's Three no da- way. There's hold, hold, game. Up, hold up. Hold up. Let's see if they if they come here after. Okay. Scroll down a bit. Let's go, not go, go to the okay. next month. Let's go, go to next month. Hold up. April. Hold up. Uh, Crap. Uh, nothing oh, in my April. God. and. Uh, Three days short of being able to make oh. free money oh. <laughs> on Alexander Holt scoring. You know it's going to happen. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, so that's the magic. Uh, <laughs> so close. So close. Oh, what about easy uh, money? It's easy money. <laughs> you can bet. I can put one in. Yes, actually, I could put one in. in <laughs> I could put a bet down for you here <laughs> in Jersey, since it's legal here. We could do yeah. it online now. <laughs> uh, yeah, you lead me down a dangerous path if I sign up for a for a DraftKings or Fanduel or, 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 or Underdog, yeah, or or William Hill or whatever. I don't know, like whatever's around now. <laughs> I, I I I almost put a bet down. So uh, I well, was in, okay. Okay, what bet did you? Well, I was oh, I was in Columbia two weeks ago. Copa America. Uh, they were playing. Oh, but oh, I got I got words about that. Yeah, they were later. playing. They were playing but, Panama the the week I was there it was a Saturday, and they have like betting parlors on the street there, and uh, yeah, I, I I don't know what their protocols are down there. I, I assume it's much like the same. You know, betting's betting, right? They're and, uh, they're more lenient about stuff. Yeah. In that region i at least with the drinking age. Uh, it's eighteen. It's 18. eighteen. Yeah. I know the drinking age is eighteen down in like South America. Yeah. Yeah, I want to put a bet down on Columbia, but they're heavily favored. So, uh, what I should have done, and what I regret not doing, is Our I latest. could I could have done the over. <laughs> I think the over uh, under yeah. was at three goals, and uh, Columbia won five zip. So uh, it was yeah. that was pretty easy money right there. Uh, I did watch it with the locals though. Uh, that was awesome. Oh, oh dude, that was soccer, awesome. especially dude the Copa America. Yeah, I don't think there is a more hateful. International <laughs> tournament that you could think of if you tried. Yes, to like everyone Euro, hates each other. Like, like the Euro, the Euro is just kind of you know, whatever, and that's countries with centuries long histories yes. of border disputes. Sure, like Europe, to like England and Germany yeah. playing each other should be should lead to fist fights in the stands. And meanwhile. Uruguay and Colombia, you actually have fist fights right. in the stand. Right, yeah. In, yeah. Meanwhile, the Euro, it's <laughs> oh, cool, but proper and respectful, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> in but with the Copa America, you got guys like clotheslining each other. Yeah, yeah, people, yeah, about players going to the stands to fight people. Yeah, like the, and then, like Uruguay. Like Uruguay and Colombia. <laughs> Colombia beat Uruguay yes. to make it to the final. Mm. And then the fans got so pissed and they're shouting unspeakable things slurs like slurs <laughs> literal and, slurs and like you know th- th- yeah things against their families that are in the stands like, like they're <laughs> they're crazy. throwing shots at the players families and then the players got to go up it's like malice at the palace it is every time but, they do this yeah but on a global scale it's great <laughs> and of course 
the greater soccer community is trying to point to the states, our country. We're the ones who are at fault for not being able to organize a tournament, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, no! They're not going to be able to do to do the World Cup in a couple of years." Like you're just, There's it's no the stopping fans. this. It's like you you know you know like the biggest annual sporting event on earth takes place in this country yearly. Yes. Right. Yeah. Like you understand that the Super Bowl takes yeah. place here every year. Every Taylor Swift tour breaks the planet. It takes place here. Yes. No issues. Yes, no issues. It's, it's, and, and, the, and I say biggest sporting event on earth every year, knowing that soccer fans are going to say, oh, the Champions League. No. I don't care about the Champions yeah. League. Yeah. Dude, the yeah. Super Bowl is the Super yeah. Bowl. Come on. Everybody cares about the Super Bowl. Don't, 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 don't get it twisted. Like, sure, the <laughs> Champions League is cool, but you're not going to get, like, the, the Super Bowl is, like, the largest cultural commercial like it is everything about america lumped into one three to five hour just window yes you have you have the the anthem you have fighter jets you have you have the coin flip you have the you have the coin toss you have, you have gambling everywhere it is on everything like it is the gamblers it's a gambling holiday. Yes. That's what it is. It's a yeah. gambling holiday. You have everybody getting all sorts of drunk and high and just going crazy. G- gorging on all kinds of food. Uh, like food. Booze flowing like water. Yeah. Like we got liquor. Yes. Other stuff. <laughs> yes. I mean, you, you got food. There's a whole spread of food. Giant flat screen, unnecessarily giant flat screen yes. TVs. You got multi-million dollar commercials. That is... That's it's, America. It is. On top of football. Right. On top of football. Right. But still, no no fights in the stands. No players going in the stands to fight people. You're right. This is soccer. I love the passion. I saw the passion firsthand in Colombia. Uh, they they, I get they it. go nuts over soccer. I get it. And then and then and then, so then the cool. championship. You got people climbing in air vents, knocking down barriers. People without tickets trying to get in. I love it. I love that this is the sport. Especially since it took place in Miami. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to talk about the makeup of that area yeah. down there? Yeah, yeah. They go nuts. Yeah. I, I, I say and I say that in the most endearing way that I can possibly say it in terms of Latin American makeup down in Miami. Passion. The, the passion yes. for that game. <laughs> you, could you imagine the Super Bowl being delayed an hour because like people tried to rush it without tickets? <laughs> or or the World Series or any like any US oh, yeah. like final Stanley Sporting Cup final. The Stanley Cup final. Yeah, people like Man, climbing. V- Vancouver burnt down there. Yeah, after. Yeah, okay, at, at the okay, stadium yeah, after. after. The yeah. A Canadian city, by the way. Like burning their, their own city down. That's that's passion too though. Yeah. I love it. I mean, the Philadelphia riots, whether the Eagles win or lose yeah. the playoff game. Yeah, by the way, greasing the, the lamppost doesn't work. Apparently it doesn't, it doesn't work, work because people in Philadelphia are psychopaths. They are, yeah. They are. So, <laughs> so yeah, that was the bet I, I probably should have placed. Should have put, you know, a million pesos uh, for how much, to, how much is a million pesos? Uh, like, it's about four grand, four thousand dollars. So <laughs> it's not, that's not that the much. Exchange rate. Uh, it's uh four thousand pesos to one U.S. dollar. Uh, oh, about, but thereabouts. God, dude. Yeah, I. It took a little while to get used to. I thought we had inflation. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, the yeah the passion the passion. Um, but yeah, I'm counting down the days to October, man. Hockey. Oh uh, yeah, and I don't really got much else to say about the Devils. Yeah, I is, mean, there anybody, I, I, is there anybody you'll miss? Marino, miss Marino. I'll I'll kind of miss yeah. John Marino. I, also, Stefan Nason. Yeah, Stefan Nason. When I saw that sounding, sure, I was I was happy about Brett Pesci, but. I mean, yeah. kind of, that was kind of an expectation. Yes, but yeah. They, like, Brendan Dillon and Pesci it was like, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, I, I like that. That's going to be great. When I saw the headline that Stefan Nason was coming back yeah. here, that fired me up. Yeah. I was 
fire it up completely. That that guy, you want to talk about a grease ball, just nasty, nasty bottom sixer who delivers in those types of areas yeah. in high leverage situations? Stefan Nason. I loved him when he was here back in 2018 when he had that line with Travis Zajac and Blake Coleman. Yeah. That just completely shut everybody and everything down in that stretch going into the playoffs. Yeah. And him coming back, dude, he's fast. Like, everything that I loved about him when he was here, he improved on it. Yeah. Every single time I saw Carolina in the playoffs, Stefan Nason was, he was scoring a goal. He was making the right plays. He was forechecking. Like, I am going to be thrilled to see him play here, I think. Like, when I saw that headline, like, instead of doing a golf clap, I was like, yeah! yeah. I was like, yeah, dude! <laughs> when I saw the free agent class, I'm like, oh, Stefan Nason. Yeah. Oh, if he came back, I was like, oh. Like, he was my kind of wish list. Like, kind of a little bit out there, but not too out there guy. And then we picked him up, and I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, that's... And, of course... Leading up to it, we thought, like, we were talking about Steven Stamkos and Jonathan Marchessault, and, of course, Nashville swooped in at the last minute. This is just a thing that happens with us, apparently, where we're on the goal line to signing a good winger, a really good winger, and then some team swoops in at the last minute and then blocks us. Yeah. With Johnny Goudreau was Columbus. Yep. Well, oh, well. Yeah. You know. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> whatever. It is what it is. Yeah, I'm sure he's kicking himself now, but or not, or he's counting dude, his money. Dude, he's he's getting ten million a year with yeah, no state know. income tax. He's killing yeah, it. Yeah, he's fine. The, the, he, it, it's clear when he signed with Columbus, he didn't care about winning. Right. Even though he said, did he say I came here to win games? Dude, these these guys will say what <laughs> he said. Came here to win games, though. Yeah. These guys will say whatever they need to say. Sure. Like sure, what I like players and coaches to be a little more candid and honest in their pressers. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially when it calls for it. Yeah. Well, that's, uh, yeah, too bad they get they, they, they get fined for what they say. It's so to, uh, they're not uh, allowed how to many, speak freely. How much are those fines? Like, how much? That Those can't be, it's got to be pocket change. Right. Compared to the money that well, these guys it's, it's get. Well, it's PR, too. From so their can't. salary and their endorsements and all that. If only these guys could say what they really wanted to say. That's what we're here for. Yeah. We're here to speak for them. So, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. But, again, uh, yeah, October can't come fast enough. Um, the ad, we've said this before. We've said it before. Yes. Well, it's just... Remember, don't get too excited. Always right. expect. All right, I'm a little... Always, always expect disappointment and failure <laughs> from your sports teams. I, I mean, based on p- track records, yes. But every time we get excited for either of our teams, how often does it work? It it ha- hasn't really worked so far. So <laughs> hasn't really worked uh, that well, but. So curb your expectations is what we've learned here in the last 200 episodes of the Cameron Willie show. Um, yeah, speaking of curbing expectations, uh, what would you like to talk about baseball next? Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where, where do you want to start? Uh, where do you want to start? Uh, now the fir- we're at the we're at the break. First half has come and gone. Uh, you, you had a lot of highs. You've had a lot of lows. You've had some below lows, some rock bottom moments, <laughs> uh, especially heading into the All Star break. And uh, oddly enough, it, it involves both of our teams. <laughs> 
Uh, which, oh. you know what? It, you know, I, I love this. I love this. I love that we can talk oh, smack to each other course. and have it be relevant. Oh, well, of course. For, oh, you're loving it. For the last 200 see, episodes. I see that monitor right there. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Mm. All right. So, the New York Yankees. <laughs> yes. Started out very Went strong. Looked great. First team to 50 wins yes. over a month ago. They've only gotten the 58. They are, in most categories, the literal worst team in baseball over the last calendar month. That would be pretty accurate, yes. Before the Orioles series, which, make no mistake, make no mistake, the Orioles have been playing like Garbado going, into that, yes. going into that series. Got swept by they, the Cubs. The, yeah, yeah. Let's and, not act like winning a series against the Orioles and blowing a chance to sweep it is any sort of accomplishment. The way the Orioles are playing sure, right now, sure, they suck yes. at the moment. <laughs> They're not great. No, they. Like, if anything, losing a series to this Yankee team is just a a statement and a message, a testament to how much this Orioles team has also fallen apart. Sure. The fact. That the Yankees are only a game back yeah. is a miracle. It is. And also, it, <laughs> like the one team in the AL East that's playing well lately, the Boston Red Sox, four and a half games back, dude. Yeah. I mean, yeah, where'd they come from? I mean, well, they're statistically lucky, but you know what? They're they're winning games. That's more than we can say about either of our teams yes. right now. Yes. But but like this. I'm I'm running out of words. I'm running out of words. Every year this happens. Yes. Every single year this happens. They start well. They're blistering. Going into June, they have everybody, even the jaded assholes like me, buying in, having faith, believing, believing. that this group is different and they're going to get it done and then they face one little bit of adversity. They make <laughs> one mistake. They lose one game, one series. Right. They have one blown save. And then it spirals. <laughs> it spirals out of control. Every year this happens. 2022. If you remember. Yes. They were, they were killing it. We were yeah. comparing that team to the 98 Yankees. Yes. And how deep that team was. And then... They fall apart. Granted, it was in July or more after the trade deadline, sure, but but still, which kind of worse than this. But point is, we believed. We thought that team was going to do it. We thought that team was in a class of their own. And then this team, going into Father's Day, we thought they were in a class of their own. We thought they were. Above and beyond everybody, the rest of the league looked weak. The AL, I mean, uh, sure, Houston's hot, and sure, Baltimore's a threat, but sure. like, I'm not going to believe that a team in the AL Central is going to beat the Yankees in a playoff series, or at, at least when they're playing well. Sure, Cleveland's killing it, but I mean, it's the AL Central. I'm not going to believe yeah, in that. Right. I mean, who? The T's? <laughs> the T's? I'm not going to believe no. in the T's. No. But... No. Going into June, the point is we thought this team was different and we thought that they were going to run the table. And then they lose that series in Boston. And like a lot of people give me crap for jumping off the bandwagon or going down with the ship when, when one bad thing happens. But I'm going based on past results. The past is very indicative of what this team is going to do in the future. I'm not going to go on blind faith. <laughs> I'm too cynical and too jaded. I'm too experienced, not only as a sports fan, but as a human being, to run on nothing but blind faith and believing that my guys are going to get it done because they never get it done. Every time this team is in a situation where the stakes are a little higher, where they're playing a team that's playing a little well, when there's a bit of a rivalry, when there's a bit of animosity there, when there's remotely any temperature other than like 70 degrees <laughs> in that game in terms of tension, 
when there's remotely any tension, when there's remotely any stakes, have you seen this team play on national television? Every time when they're on Fox, they're terrible. ESPN, they're terrible. The big stage. Like, if you count Roku on that <laughs> Sunday morning, you have Matt Vaskersian calling the game. They blew it in ways that only they know how to blow it. When I look at this team now, I see a team that has mastered the art of losing in spectacular <laughs> ways that only the Mets and the Jets have have come pretty bad. close. It's pretty bad. It is like I mean we, the Leafs, the Leafs and the, and Leafs. the Cowboys, right? Like the and it's every single year, and there's a lack of accountability. You have Anthony Volpe not knowing to run on a ground ball because he was checking if it was foul. <laughs> they teach you that when you're five years old. Yeah. yeah. Run didn't score. And then Run didn't you, have, score. You, have, you have DJ LeMay, you're not running out of the box. That guy's an issue. Of course, he's going to get 200 at-bats before the end of the year because, you know, sunk cost fallacy. And the Yankees think a smart way to build a team that's going to win a championship is relying on a bunch of geriatric 30-somethings to somehow not get hurt and bounce back to what they were in 2019. Yeah. Like, Giancarlo Stanton getting hurt, it's like— and I know what the excuse is going to be because it's it's every year. Brian Cashman is going to go out and say, well, we had some injuries. House Timer is going to go out. Well, we had some injuries. When you rely on guys in their mid-30s who are injury prone, you can't be shocked when they get injured. Right. Especially if they get <laughs> injured year after year. It's every year this every happens. Every year. Every year. Yes. And no matter how tough of a game they talk in the offseason about, oh, this is a part of his game. No, we're a fully operated. This is a championship operation. You have guys who are making little league mistakes, and you have their manager. Instead of trying to put a little bit of heat on his guys by saying something to the press, you don't even need to go and bash them to all the reporters who are going to tweet it and make everything of it. You just need to say something other than nothing is wrong. You need to say something other than, oh, he's fine. I didn't see any issue with that. (laughs) You have this culture of lackadaisicalness and losing that has permeated and perpetuated throughout that clubhouse and on this team, where, where it's gotten to the point where you know when guys sign with the Yankees and they inexplicably just don't do well. Uh, like, we've seen it many times. Like, yes. Look at looking at Carlos Rodon, looking at uh, Josh guys, Donaldson, guys uh, like Sonny Gray, <laughs> Josh Donaldson. You look at you look at guys who were supposed to be contributors and then came in and then just started sucking overnight. When, like, I'm going to be honest, I don't think the allure of coming to this team now is the prospect of winning a championship and playing in front of the Yankee fans and playing in Yankee Stadium and all of the aura and history around it, like they say in those microphones. I'm starting to think that maybe the allure is being able to get your money, get your endorsements because you're a Yankee. You can go out there, you can half-ass it, phone it in. Collect a paycheck. Make endless mistakes all the time and still collect your paycheck and make your money while facing no consequences (laughs) and having your manager vehemently defend you in the process. No. That That is genuinely, that's a theory that I have. I don't know if it's a conspiracy theory or not. But I'm starting to think that the culture of it's okay, it's baseball, it happens. Oh, it was injuries. It was bad luck. What are you going to do? It's a crapshoot of like this shoulder shrugging that they do all the time. No accountability. Like uh, that. Catching up to them. Like that culture leads to guys who 
are just there. Like, normally, a, a reason that someone would sign with, like, the Rockies, like Chris Bryant. Like, you see, you're going to see people going the Chris Bryant route on the Yankees. That's, like, I think that's some, that's at least a part of it. Now, sure, the coaching and all that, that's also a, a tire fire, but, <laughs> but this culture, and I'm looking to judge. He's the captain. Ma'am. He's a leader in that room. He's the most well-respected guy on that team. And you have him perpetuating that culture of, it's fine, don't need to rock the boat. Don't need to be loud. Let's use our inside voices. Okay? <laughs> Let's all sit around in a circle and talk about how we feel. Right. What, what you want to go in the, in, the, in the locker room and start throwing stuff around? Yes! Start hitting bat, yes! I bat, want people like... to start throwing stuff around. I want... Uh, I would love to see dude, that. Dude, I, what I want to see is somebody, and Marcus Stroman kind of did, and you know what? It woke the team up. They scored 16 runs in that game. But guys who were just yelling... Guys Them who are calling people out, like lighting calling fire, out teammates, lighting fires in public? under asses. Yeah, I want guys lighting fires under asses. And when Glaber Torres got benched for a couple of games, he came back, lit a fire under. Yeah, I'm sure. Because it's embarrassing when yeah. guys play without the threat, and this works any field, any field. When you have people who are working, and the threat of being fired or getting your pay cut or anything else when you're not working under that threat you don't really have a reason to to really try yeah same case goes for being a student like if my if one of my professors told me hey you don't have to do any of the, of the assignments you're going to get an a you know what i'm going to do i'm not going to do any assignments yeah that's the type of culture that has become baked into the wood that is holding up those lockers in that locker room. And that, that in my opinion, is the big issue. Yeah. So who do you blame then? Who are we getting rid of first? Uh, <laughs> Cashman or Boone? Which one should go first? I'm getting rid of Cashman. <laughs> I'm getting rid of Cashman. I've mean, said this. I used to be kind of a Cashman guy because I was like, eh, the team's winning games. But now I'm like, no. No. Yeah. No, dude. A $300 million team should not have two-thirds of its lineup be rendered just immune to just be, or the team becoming immune to just two thirds of the lineup. Right. Like there are two threats, or I guess three now ish with like Ben Rice. Yeah. Like, like maybe four with like Austin Wells, but like you only have two legit <laughs> threats in that lineup. Out of, yeah, out of a lineup with nine guys. So you can just pitch around Judge and Soto. And to be honest, I'm going to, I'm going to throw this out there. I think the course of action at the trade deadline. What's your move? You, you, you got to Juan Soto. Already? I think, dude, well, dude, I mean, dude, he, he is. No, no, not, no, no, no. Hold, hold up. Hold probably up, hold up. not staying. Hold, so, here, okay. Here's my rationale. Okay. He's on expiring contract. Yes. It's a big seller's market. You have nobody. It's selling any players because of that stupid third wild card. Yes. And he'd easily be the best piece on the market. You know I the mean, type of... Th you'd get some... I don't care if it's a rental, dude. Juan Soto's Juan Soto. And any team who thinks they're a Juan Soto away from being... Like, take a look at like the Milwaukee Brewers. I mean, you think the, the Milwaukee Brewers could probably use Juan Soto. Cleveland... Yeah, oh yeah, totally. Seattle. Yeah. The Seattle Mariners, yeah. they'd they'd give a little bit for Juan Soto. Uh yeah, there there are some teams that are not that far off, so plenty plenty of teams could use a Juan Soto. Uh will they give up the farm for him, but they wouldn't give up the farm, he's a rental, but it would be still we gotta give up something for him. But yeah, it would be more substantial. Wow. Than that would be a bombshell. And I think it's the way to go. 
because this team's not giving him a reason to want to stay. Yeah, but you get some good stuff back for and him. Like, and this team isn't winning with him. I have zero faith in this team to win the World Series with Soto. Like, um, I, but, but here's the playing as they are now. Yeah, probably. Now here's here's another point with Soto. I mean, he hits free agency. You can take a run at him then. Do what they did with the Raldis Chapman. Good point. Ed gets something back for him. Yeah, get something back for him get at a the good, deadline. Pretty decent package. That's how we got Glaber Torres for a Raldis Ooh. Chapman. Not a but bad thought there. We traded him a Cubs for a rental. We got Glaber Torres back. And then we ended up signing Chapman the, in the offseason. Oh, that would be a bombshell. Now, uh, uh, would the fan base stand for it, though? A lot well, of you the will. Fan, a lot you of will. the fans wouldn't. The smart fans would. Right. How many smart fans are there? <laughs> I don't know how many. I, I don't meet a lot of them. <laughs> I, don't, I, I only meet the uh, the reactionary uh, boneheaded fans. But, <laughs> but. Um, I mean, you know, I, I would welcome this trade to get him out of the, the AL East. But, hey, <laughs> that's just me being selfish. If you want him? <laughs> Ah, hey, we can work this out, dude. You got a prospect. Yeah, we got a huge prospect. Yeah, you, you can give you, us one you of your. Can, you can improve your team. You, you, you can give us one of your frat boy prospects. Sure. Yeah, one of the white boy, uh, one of the awesome white guys on the uh, the Orioles. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Jackson Holiday, Kobe Mayo. Uh, <laughs> no, no, but why does the makeup of that team? Just all frat guys. Uh, they all look the same. There's a meme going around where they all—they literally all look the same. They're oh like, yeah. They have like mullets and uh, they're all, all young. Like, I don't know, man. They're—they're—they're they're really good Dude, at baseball. They, they look like, they look like frat. They look like they, they're frat. Specifically, they, frat boys. They could start their own fraternity. Yes, for sure. <laughs> oh, uh, well, I—I yeah, I hate to bring it up, but uh, or 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 not, or maybe not. I don't hate that much. But were you watching this this? Game on Sunday, ooh, ooh, ooh. heading into the All Star break. Ooh, ooh. Now, you know, from my perspective, the uh, Orioles just got swept by the Cubs, uh, dropped two to the Yankees, and we're about we're a, a hair's breadth away from getting swept by the Yankees, and then losing your lead in the division after, and losing the lead in the division after being three games up heading into the you know kind of heading week. into the break. Yeah, yeah, they and then Clay Holmes. Saves your vibes completely. Okay, I'm going to say straight. Oh, all but right. Like, can't, like, oh, can't put it all on him, but most of it on him. A lot. Dude, he walked the ba- He walked the bottom of the lineup. He did. He did. So why the hell can this team not handle Jorge Mateo? <laughs> the, <laughs> why speed, does he always kills, no, man. no, he no, he always gets on base. That's that's the issue. We're terrified of pitching to him for some reason. Yeah, and you know, Jorge <laughs> Mateo, uh, number nine batter. But yes, <laughs> not uh, not the offensive threat of the Orioles by any means. But he keep great great defense and he can run. So sometimes that sometimes it works oh, out. Yeah. Um, I yeah, I, I was in Canada, so I didn't get to why I had to follow along on game day. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, Canada, yeah. Orioles up three two. Heading into the ninth, Craig Kimbrell, Craig Kimbrell coming, oh, coming up, God. which you know, not the old Craig Kimbrell, and uh, tends to wilt under pressure. And I didn't think that one run lead was going to hold up, uh, but to give up a three run homer to Ben Rice was probably the worst thing he could have yeah. done. And at that point, and I haven't checked; I don't know what the Yankees' win probability was at that point. Probably in the in the low nineties, I imagine at that mm-hmm. point. And uh, yeah, Clay Holmes comes in. He you know, walks a couple people, but does get two outs. <laughs> then, and then, then, and then, then, then the roof, then the, the sky falls and the bottom drops out all at the same time. Ground ball, Anthony Volpe. Gold glove shortstop, by sure. the way. Just yep. boots it. And then the fly ball to Verdue had a 99% catch probability. Yes. And he takes the first step in. In. And I don't, in. Know, I don't know why this team had the outfield playing in with two outs. Uh yeah, I mean again that just speaks to the Yankee process. Yeah. Uh, I mean 
he was pretty far in, but then he went in even more. And uh, yeah. <laughs> and he fell back, tripped over Verdugo, who has been <laughs> less than useless. Sure. The, uh, yeah, the, the, the flop, <laughs> the, just icing on the cake, man. Icing on the cake. And I then can't. you completely forget every single little thing that had you pissed off that weekend. I, I mean, I wasn't pissed off about my, I, you know, I, I, I was pissed off about them getting swept. It was all but a foregone conclusion. I, yeah, I was about to head into the All-Star break. You, you forgot that Pretty you lost. Pretty depressed. You, six game losing is, streak. Bottom line is, you forgot that you lost the series. I you did. didn't feel but like I, you lost the series. I did. And I watched that play like 20 times that, that night, yes. I couldn't believe it. Uh, but I, I can. I can. <laughs> like. uh, I Listen, I don't get a lot of joyous moments. I didn't. I've not had a lot of joyous moments uh, being an Orioles fan in the last two hundred episodes, or um, you know, last year notwithstanding, and and uh, the year before where they they hit five hundred. But a lot of pain, a lot of loss, lot not a lot to cheer about, and uh, that was almost. Uh, it felt good. Not, I'm not. I don't know what to tell you, dude. Uh, yeah, but. That that and that was the first half, and it's been fun. The uh, but the true test comes now with ne- with next seventy plus games, and then the playoffs, and uh, yeah, <laughs> who knows what's gonna happen next? And we got the trade li- deadline coming up, so you know who knows what moves get made, and and then you gotta see if they work out or not. But those those were the good GMs uh, shine, Which I guess. The Yankees do not have. They do <laughs> not have a good GM. Yeah. Well, uh, so about two weeks, we'll find we'll find out what happens. Like literally yeah. two weeks from now, we'll, we'll we we may be renting and raving. So, <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, it would have been, it felt pretty bad if they got if they got swept. I think you would have been feeling pretty decent. I'd be feeling better. Although to be honest, uh, regardless of what this team does, I'm still gonna believe that they're gonna screw it up in the end. Yeah. Well, they did win a series finally after after losing. They won what? consecutive games for the first time in a month. Oh. <laughs> well, leave it to the Baltimore Orioles to give you that. That leave it, <laughs> it never fails, and then leave it to the Yankees to make it feel like we lost five games. Yes, yeah. It's um, a thing that this team just does. They'll be on the verge of sweeping a team, and then their closer will blow it. Yeah, there's no yeah. in this bullpen. Like again, this team is so mentally fragile. I uh, I noticed that, but I, I also feel your pain with the. Uh, the uh, inconsistent closer, you know, we'd say. Uh, Craig Kimbrell and the Yankees have always kind of owned Kimbrell. Yeah. Like, I, yeah. Oh, well, that's, yeah. Uh, did you watch the Home Run Derby or the All-Star game? No. Okay, did not not even... D- because I'm, I'm not... I don't enjoy baseball right now. <laughs> I'm not going to have it. Um, have it I, you know, I, I, I watched it. Gunnar Henderson was in it. Um, you know, I, I mean, I, I enjoy the home run derby. It's a exhibition. It's fun. Uh, however, in the back of my mind, like this isn't a true home run derby without Judge and Otani, mm, right? Yeah, the the home run derby just doesn't mean anything nowadays. They, yeah, I, I wish they could make it mandatory that the top eight guys hitting the most home runs have to, like mandatory. But... Although, if Judge were in it, he'd just win. Right. Every year, but him and Otani would probably combine for like forty-five home runs. Yeah. Around. Or like they'd hit forty-five home runs each. Yeah. Yeah. I I think yeah. I mean, if you're gonna put it that, yeah, I think it should be mandatory. Like, if you're that good, then you got to do it. But, but with uh, the fragility of the baseball players now, <laughs> and the large yeah. contracts and all that that's at stake, uh, I guess you can't blame them for not <laughs> for not participating. Um. I know it used to be a badge of honor, though. It used to be an honorable thing. I mean, like, Judge did in his rookie year. He destroyed everyone. He did? Everything. I wish, like, he was the higher seed, but I wish 
they just let the clock just run. Oh, until they stop see, hitting. Yeah. And, like, and see how many he could hit. Right. I think he would have been able to hit like 35. Yeah. In a single round. Yeah. It's like you have, you could argue the best clean power hitter in the last like 50 years. Yeah. You could, yeah. You, could you could actually make that argument about Aaron Judge. Like he is the best Yankee hitter since since Mantle. Yeah. Statistically, in terms of just raw production, raw power production, like raw, raw yeah. production like OPS, WRC, yep. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All that he's like a short Jeter was a great player. He's more accomplished than Judge. Like I'd rather like would you ask me would I rather have Derek Jeter or Aaron Judge? Is my God, dude, Derek Jeter. Yeah. Like, I'd trade Aaron Judge for Derek Jeter one for one. (laughs) In their primes. In their prime, absolutely. I'm trading Judge for Jeter. But, like, in terms of raw production, Judge is the best Yankee hitter since since Mantle. Yeah. And in terms of the major leagues, like, with clean hitters, guys who aren't on steroids... Yeah, you're, you're throwing him into some rarefied territory. Yeah, for sure. Like this is a once in a generation guy, and it is a shame that he's allowed that culture of losing to permeate in his own head and affect how he operates. And it's a shame that this team isn't helping him win a World Series because he's going to end his career as baseball's Hendrick Lundquist. <laughs> that would be a shame. Although we like how King Hank's career went, so. Well, yeah, we do definitely do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, game last night was it was good. I mean, the AL one, AL one, AL one. But uh, Otani three run homer <laughs> was was, and uh, Clay Holmes did not <laughs> sniff the mound. So good. I think uh, Bruce Bochy is. Uh, little yeah, smarter although, than although that. I'm sure he, like, Clay Holmes just needed rest. Yeah. That was the thing. He pitched the game before. He's sucked lately, so. Yeah. It well, was just like, hey, man, just take a little bit. Although I'm sure if he went in, he would have dotted 98 on the corners and done a 1-2-3 two, three inning. Oh, so in, a, in a meaningless but, game? Like, he would have. Oh, a game that pumped, didn't matter? He would have pumped the lower half of the strike zone. Right. And it would be like, like, Wow. Yeah, wow, not walk, course, not walk to anybody. It's like, yeah, oh, of course, of course, of course. Now, when it doesn't you, matter, uh, you're you're untouchable. Like now, you throw strikes. <laughs> um, it's all just the yips, all the yips. That that's baseball. Um, I did want to bring up the uh, the Josh Donaldson comment. <laughs> the Josh Donaldson tweet. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. Uh, roasted the Orioles for the poor Orioles for some reason. Uh, <laughs> after, so uh, on social media, uh, let's see if I can pull this up. Uh, Josh Donaldson, not a very beloved Yankee. No. Uh, somebody made a comment about uh, the, uh, the <laughs> uh, uh, why everybody hates the Yankees. Josh Donaldson fires back. Uh, no, you hate the Yankees because year after year they have beat down your hopes and dreams of winning. First by beating you on the field. Second, even if they have a down year, they can go reload. Enjoy this little stretch, your players. Uh, enjoy this little stretch. Your players will be a Yankee, Dodger, or Red Sox, and that's directed at uh, uh, Freddie at Freddie the O's fan. So Freddie, <laughs> that Freddie, I mean, thanks for thanks for bringing out the ire of one mm, Josh, Josh Donaldson, yeah. a former New York Yankee who <laughs> who sucked. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Yes, he did. So, <laughs> yeah, what's what's what what's got Josh, Josh Johnson all hot and bothered now? Like what? <laughs> the, the Orioles. I mean, the, the, I I love it beef. though. I love it. I mean, he had he had beef with the O's. When, I guess. I mean, the the Blue Jays. I know you. Who, all right, yeah, but that's more Cito Gaston you, you, not not like, putting Mike Mussina in in the All Star game in his, on in, on his home at home and on his home uh, home field. By the way, yeah. 
But then it goes from there. I just don't. <laughs> I, I, Josh I love Donaldson. I love seeing Toronto. Yes, would have been completely dead on accurate and on point in like the late nineties, right? And early two sure. thousand. Sure, when the Yankees were the sure, gold and it worked. In it worked. It worked many times. But now it just kind of looks pathetic, right? <laughs> like the Yankees aren't that team anymore. They're they're just not. Yeah, they go bargain bin shopping. And, <laughs> and they give out money to bad players, bad contracts. Uh, that's currently what's going on now. Yes. Like well, you have like all you have is just a ton of David Clarksons on that team. If you remember <laughs> that contract, I do. Yes. Oh, also speaking of hockey salary cap goodness, um, yeah. Evgeny Kuznetsov is going back to the KHL, which oh, thank God. He's uh, we're, we're, he's not going to be a problem for us. Yeah. Anymore. But... What are they paying him? That's. <laughs> oh, oh no, no. Here's the thing. Okay. Um, the Hurricanes and Capitals get all of that salary forgiven. They don't have to pay a what? cent. Wow. Meanwhile, we. Yes. The New Jersey yes. Devils. Yes. Yes. To this day. Yes. <laughs> this is the final year, but. They still pay Ilya Kovalchuk yes. on, in terms of cap hit mm-hmm. a two hundred fifty thousand yes. dollars yearly recapture yeah. penalty. Right. Why? Year. Because the league hates us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm honestly, unbelievable. Like, honestly, thinking about the history of this team, it wouldn't shock me that the league has something against us. Because before we won the cup, we were supposed to move to Nashville. Right. Like we're not supposed to exist as a team. Yes. They're, the Rangers and Islanders are bigger and more popular in the tri-state area, not to mention the Flyers taking up South Jersey. Sure. So you – and, like, you got the Bruins too, so. Yeah, we refuse, we refuse to die, but no matter <laughs> – despite what the league – Like, we were supposed to become the Nashville Predators. Yes, and then we won the cup in '95. Yeah, you know, despite and, the league trying to trying to beat us down, uh, we will not go away. But <laughs> we're still, wow, jeez, that was a long time ago, man. So 2024, like, <laughs> and then this is the then, last year, though. Yeah, yeah, this is the last year of yeah. the Leah Kovalchuk recapture penalty. Yeah, how is that? <laughs> how is that fair? It's not. It's not. I mean, we're the only team that got in trouble for circumventing the salary. Yeah. Or trying to. Yeah. Meanwhile, Vegas and Tampa just. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. They can be $16 million over the cap. Yep. Nope. Yeah. Well, oh. They can put everybody on LTIR. Yeah. They, oh, but do people people pay to watch them? Yes. Like, okay, well, mm. here, you do whatever you want. <laughs> you do whatever you want. That's why I wanted the Devils to do with Dougie Hamilton because I, me, being the foolish child that I am, I thought they were going to be good and be in a playoff spot even with Dougie Hamilton hurt. So I wanted them to just load up at the deadline and just use Dougie Hamilton's salary relief yeah. to build the team yeah. and to help win a cup. Yeah. But no, nah, they sucked. and Yeah, and it didn't work. Yeah, it wouldn't have worked out anyway. So, yeah. Um. Well, under the second half of the baseball season, uh, I, well, I I I did want to see if you had an opinion on this. The uh, so now All Star game, everyone wears a standard uniform, I hate which were that. I hate that so ugly, much. Ass ugly, uh, by the it way. It is hideous, hideous. Yeah. Regardless of how the uniforms look, it's hideous and it is just a marketing scheme by Nike. Yes. And they want to sell more more of those crappy ass jerseys to just that sell everybody hates because you know people are gonna buy them. And however many profit margins that like you know, they know it doesn't cost much of anything. No, to, but it's a cash grab. Whereas in the old school days, every all star wear their own team uniform, and I loved it. I thought it was cool. It was, it was cool to see all those different uniforms on one on one field. They have each person representing their and team. And it looked great. It did look. The awesome. MLB used to have the best all star game. Yeah. Yeah. What happened? It was like every year, at least when the vibes were good throwing on the all-star game and seeing 
everybody just in their own uniforms. Like, it was a really fun game. Yeah. And baseball is the only sport where, like, in the All-Star game, you can't really phone it in. No. Yeah, it's not run, like the Pro Bowl, which is literally flag football. Yeah, <laughs> and it's not or like the, the NHL All Star was like, all right, here, just score whatever. Here. <laughs> That's empty. Just just put the puck in there. Meanwhile, in the MLB All Star game, you just have you have guys who are just throwing hard, and you yep. got everybody. You can't fake it. No, like what are you going to do intentionally make an error? Right. No. I mean, sure, maybe you're not running as hard around the bases. Sure, but... we only pitch the contact a little more than you would, but yeah. Oh yeah. But you don't want, you don't want to look bad either, though. Yeah. Yeah. Like what you want? You don't want to end up like Logan Webb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, when did when did that end? When uh, when when uh, when they they ended up in a tie that one year? Like when did the fun end? No, it was still fun. when they took away the stakes. Uh, the uh, the winning team used to get home uh, home field advantage. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I think that was a little too far. A little bit, yeah, yeah. Because that had nothing to do with uh, the teams that ultimately ended up there. I, I agree. It was fun to have some stakes though, but that that may have been too much. Yeah, that that would fly like in the Cold War. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, on to the second half. Uh so the Giants. <laughs> oh, hard not the Giants. Dude, hard knocks, hard knocks. That's been a been a thing. Hard yeah, knocks. Like lot, lot going on, and uh, preseason coming up very quickly. Dude, all very the hard quickly. knocks is the main thing that has been happening. So, whole lot of drama again. I haven't seen episode three. Right. I am going to sit down and watch it tonight. Yeah, probably not during dinner. Dinner is YouTube at my desk, but. After dinner, probably gonna just take a shower, throw on my robe, and just sit down and watch and the take it all in the drama and the <laughs> because this episode I, I don't want any spoilers. Sure, I'm not really gonna look at Twitter that much. Like I don't want you scrolling through while no, nope, will not. I'm talking about okay, this. but apparently this is the big Saquon Barkley episode. Like this was the whole plot point in this is how the Saquon Barkley situation went down. And there was a lot of tension, obviously. Saquon was kind of talking in a one-foot-out-the-door tone to Joe Shane, but Joe Shane was really... And it's really cool to see the insight into how these things work. Yeah. I thought initially it was going to be a nothing thing, but really standing up, like, they are showing a lot more than I thought they would show. I, I mean, if you're going to do it, it's like they do it were like publicly. That. They flat out admit they confirmed the rumor that they were interested in trading up for Drake May. Mm -hmm. Shows that they're not 100 percent committed to Daniel Jones. So that's a a big a big plus. Yeah, there, revelation. I think mm, it was another thing. If Brian Burns wasn't a giant, it would have been Christian Wilkins from the Miami Dolphins. Yep. And you want to talk about a defensive interior, him and Dexter Lawrence. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Woo! And, and along with trade talks for Brian Burns, that that's going to go down in this reset. Boy, I really should have watched it last night. Bad journalism on me, but... But really, what everyone's interested in is Saquon Barkley. Yeah, there your thoughts. Talks there. Your thoughts. Your emotion. Um, what are you feeling? I'm, I'm gonna reserve any take that I have on until I see the episode. Until okay. I see what really happened. It's like there's people saying, "Oh, Saquon never got an offer," and then it's like, "Oh, the Giants offered him something very similar, and he said he wanted to stay here, and he just went to the Eagles despite him and being an asshole." And that's a, <laughs> it's a lot of spite. I mean, dude, he doesn't owe this team anything. Right. Dude, I, they sucked. Well, the that offensive that's, line shredded his knees in half. All dude, right, that, that, this is what I was getting at. Like, can you blame him? I'm not blaming him at all. No. Okay. But he, the Eagles? I Yeah. That that's... makes me think. <laughs> if he went to, like, the Texans or the Ravens. Yeah, I'd big like, deal, right? I'd be like, you know what? I don't care. Yeah. 
Actually, the, what have the Texans ever done to the Giants? And the Ravens, yeah, you had the Super Bowl sure. 20-something years sure. ago. But, <laughs> like, the Super Bowl, that never happened. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. There, there was no Super Bowl between the Giants and Ravens. That that was the Super Bowl Super Bowl that never happened. That they were – they skipped Super Bowl 35. There, there was a, a leap. It was a <laughs> They they didn't play thirty five. They just after no, after the NFC Championship, yes, they saw the Giants beat the Vikings so badly. They really did kick their ass in that game. Yes, but, like the forty one to nothing mm-hmm. shutout. But they saw that the Giants beat the Vikings so badly that they just decided, you know what, they're they're too good to even play in the Super Bowl. You know? <laughs> No, congratulations. The, the Giants are Super Bowl champions. Yeah. No, the Ravens got so scared that they forfeited. <laughs> the Ravens forfeited the Super Bowl, yeah. and I, I don't know what this media hoax is about the Ravens blowing us out in the Super Bowl. Yeah. It's fake news. Right. It's fake right. That's news. true fake news. That's right fake news. True fake the, news right there. The, the liberal media is trying to... <laughs> the is, foist on everybody. The, 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 the stuff you see on NFL Network, which is an increasingly anti-Giants network, are trying to perpetuate this lie that the Giants lost a Super Bowl to the Baltimore Ravens nah. in, the, in 2000. Oh, yeah. That never happened. That game never happened. The Giants have five Super Bowl rings. <laughs> They're five and zero oh in Super Bowls. Right, and, uh, of course. Yeah, and Kerry Collins has a Super Bowl ring. Of course. And Tiki Barber has one too. No, there, there, there's no. What are you talking about? He retired before he had a chance to win one. Serves that asshole. Yeah. Um. But yeah. But say, I mean, Saquon though. In green. <laughs> I mean that that's kind of that's kind of the big plot point. In green, that that's gonna hurt me so much. And all of a sudden, I see people on Twitter say that, "Go oh, Saquon was so important to your team." Meanwhile, it's like, dude, running backs in the NFL in this day and age. I was against bringing Saquon back in the first place. Sure, I was just more pissed off that he went to the Eagles. Right, I that's what I think. Like I I didn't care. I wouldn't care if he stayed here or went anywhere. Anywhere else, right? But the Eagles, <laughs> the Eagles, like he just went to the Eagles, and of course he's gonna kill us. Yes, if he doesn't get hurt, because remember, well, there no, no the, Jason Kelsey. There, there is the, that no Jason Kelsey. Did Jason Kelsey retiring? That I feel like not enough people are bringing up how much of a difference that is. Having no Jason Kelsey no. on that offensive line. Also, I hate that he was an Eagle because Jason Kelsey's so cool. Like on his podcast, he's so fun. Yeah. yeah Shall it's, I, it's Kelsey Shall brothers, I, man. They're yeah, they're wi- they're winning, man. <laughs> Those two dude, can't lose right now. Dude, Travis Kelsey could retire right now and he'd be fine. Yeah. You know how much money his girls making? Right. Yeah. Hey, they're, they're making like. Fifty million a show. <laughs> he he he's he's got rings. She to, has. He's a, got rings to win. He loves the he's game. He's got three. He wants all seven. He's got three, dude. <laughs> he wants please. Seven. He wants seven. Please quit, bro. Please. Oh, the, I don't know who else Come, is going to be mean, the what, Eagles in the Super Bowl. You know, I should shut up. Dude. I I love Travis Kelsey, but like, <laughs> I feel I, a lot of people are starting to hate Travis Kelsey because of Taylor Swift. I. Although I will say that has kind <laughs> of, I, I like. I will say, as a member of a fan base that has seen it be infested by Swifty types, yeah, because you know the Devils, you no, know, they have Jack Hughes, they have, they attract what is called puck bunnies, right? If you're familiar with that term, of course. If you're familiar with what they are, there, yes, just, yeah. Like they're teenage girls who have crushes on hockey players. No, I'm not trying to invalidate they're their groupies. fandom or anything. No, sure. I'm not trying to invalidate no, their fandom No, but it's a thing. It's a thing. But some of the most diehard Devils fans I know are puck bunnies sure. who are interested in right, – like I've been in Discord calls with puck bunnies before. <laughs> Dude, it is – like the I've, – I've been exposed to the, the AO3 fan fictions right. about, about the New Jersey Devils. It is – it is a 
thing that, like, I didn't know that the human mind could conjure things like like that. Right. <laughs> that could be that could be just written and conscribed in that type of way. Yeah. Or can be formulated. Those thoughts could be formulated onto massive like 5,000 word fan fictions. <laughs> it's bad. Like anyways, like I understand what it's like to sure. have a fan base be diluted by those things. Sure. So, I would understand. I know if I was a Chiefs fan, I'd be kind of pissed that that the fan base has been kind of infested by Swifties. Yeah, but still, I'm, I'm they're winning rings, up. man. Who cares? They, they're, they're winning they rings. They get the Lombardi yeah. trophy every year. Man, that's Who like cares? If, that's like if the Devils win the Cup. I wouldn't care. Yum, yum. If, I wouldn't care if the parade was half uh, Swifties like, or like, whoever, whoever. and Taylor or whoever. Swift or Lana I don't Del- care. Yeah, Taylor Swift or Lana Del Rey or Harry yeah. Styles. Sure. T-shirts just. A Doja Cat, like yeah, <laughs> just they're looking for Jack Hughes. Yeah, like Olivia Rodrigo. Although I think more guys like Olivia Rodrigo. Probably. I, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. I oh speaking of singers, uh, so, uh the 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 national anthem from the Home Run Derby. Oh my uh, god! <laughs> I, I I got through five seconds of it watching it, and I'm like, no, no, I can't. Actually, no, wow. no, no, play it live on here. All Play right. it live on here. I'm going to react to this blind. Okay. Okay. We may need an NSFW tag here. Okay. Uh, see if we can find it in its entirety. Mm, uh, I guess this would be it here. Oh, God. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> oh God! What the hell? <laughs> what the Oh god, the final part's always the worst. <laughs> Ingrid Andrus, everybody. Ingrid Andrus. Oh, and no, she yo, was. And it came out that she said she, she was hammered. She said she was hammered. Mm. Uh, I mean, she looked hammered. But sounded hammered. But what a great do. But on the flip side, what a great way to get out of this by just saying you were drunk. Oh, Does yeah. that work every time? Yeah. That, what happened? A, I was drunk. Oh, okay. Like, all right. Eh. Yeah. Don't oh. do it again. Yeah. Don't do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I. <laughs> that's pretty. Oh. That was pretty bad. Oh, that was bad. That was she bad. was moaning. I. I. That's what you. I mean, if that's what you call it, sure. Oh my God! It's, it's like. That's why I said NSFW. Yeah, dude. Oh yeah. my god. No, I, I thought there was something wrong with the the Arlington sound system, but no, no, there's something no. wrong with her. Also, she doesn't have a bad voice. Like that's when what it I was, heard. I don't know. Like, when when, it, when she was when she's sober, singing, when she was singing like a normal person, mm-hmm. she, like not hammered. Like I wonder when she, when she wasn't moaning into the microphone. Right. I wonder she what had she a was, pretty good voice. I wonder what she was hammered on. I wonder what her, what her, what her drink of choice is. I like it. That's what I want to know. She looks like 
she like white claws. You like slammed a 15, bunch of white like claws. Fifteen white. Claws. I mean, you're gonna. <laughs> oh, I mean, she's she's very white. I'm gonna guess uh, white claws, but yeah, I don't she, even know white. Blonde, like fifteen white claws don't get you that hammer though. And she's remember like like I know I'm not gonna go down that road. Okay, but yeah. like yeah. Anyways. Not publicly. That is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hypothetically. Okay. That's how you get out of this. Hypothetically. Hypothetically. In Minecraft. Yes. In Minecraft. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> okay. Hypothetically. In Minecraft. Um, uh, I took a screenshot of this while I was watching the end of the oh, All Star right. game. Uh, they asked A Rod, Big Poppy, and Derek Jr. Jr. their predictions, World Series predictions. Um, I think that they went to Jeter first. Uh, Jeter predicted Philadelphia Phillies over the Baltimore Orioles, mm. oh. which you know, that's I'd actually bad. be fine with a repeat of, ni- of 1983. Uh, in oh, that year, the oh, Orioles oh. won, but um, shoot, even if they make it this year, I'd be pretty happy. Yeah. Now I prefer they would win, but um, but uh, I I. Uh, I have a little more respect for Derek, che- Derek Cheater today for that <laughs> oh, prediction. Yeah. Uh, A-Rod predicts the Yankees over the Dodgers, which, again, that's delusional. Been the, that's been the <laughs> most basic, bland World Series well, prediction what, that has what never What else happened. from A-Rod, what else do you expect but the most bland, easy, like, go-to prediction for that guy? Yeah, he took the most bland, easy, go-to steroids. Yeah. And uh, David Ortiz, Big Poppy, uh, Red Sox over the Phillies, which... You so know, everybody, the only honest guy at that table was Derek Jeter. I agree. Like the only honest, I pragmatic agree. guy at that, <laughs> on that desk, on that panel, yes. was Derek Jeter. Yeah, I, I'm, and I'm here for it. Whether it pans out that way, who knows? But a lot of good teams out there. Uh, a lot of good trades that could be made. A lot of stuff could happen over the second half. Um, we'll be here for better, or for or for worse. <laughs> yeah. We'll be here. We'll be here. Yeah. Yeah. But over the last 200 episodes, uh, well, you've been here for that, so so anybody that's been here since day one. Ah, uh, yeah. Thank you. If you just tuned in, thank you. And, uh, right. yeah, here's a 200 more, man. Oh, solid. We'll be old men, but, uh, Holy, yeah. Holy, we're going to be bitter, grumpy old oh, men. Even more bitter? Yes. Even grumpier? Yes. Okay, I'm here for it. No, I'm, I can't I'm, wait. I'm a grumpy old man. This yeah. is... Uh, like, I'm 20 and I have the... I, I've, I've been thinking, like, like if I no, if I had a proper skincare routine, I'd look... More not too late. Age. And you, you look very youthful still, so... <laughs> like not, I look... Not too late. I, 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 don't, I don't look... Well, here, like if we take away the zero, that's how old you are, right? Yeah, like, yeah, I'm go. 20. Yeah. There you go. Wait, so wait, how old were you when you came in, first came in? 14. Yeah, that's cr- that's awesome. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, my freshman year of high school. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, you know, if you watch from day one until now, you can see not only have you grown... Physically, mentally, but professionally as well, and uh, it's pretty awesome. Oh yeah, it's pretty amazing. Like, this is great. Yeah, it's great, man. Yeah, so yeah, we love it. Uh, we love it. All right, I think that about wraps. Yeah, no, and congratulations, my friend. Up, thank you. Congratulations, thank you, sincerely, thank you. Yeah, but anyways, from Ming Chen in the Shared Universe podcast here, I am Cameron Mully. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow me on TikTok. And as always, stay classy, New Jersey.